What's a plumbing apprenticeship? Let's talk about it. I'm Kenny Molotov, licensed plumber, professional magician, and entertainer. On this channel, I go through the ins and outs of my career in plumbing. I take you through a day in the life, and we talk tools, theory, and mindset. I'm trying to give you an arsenal of knowledge and an online resource so you can take this trade head on and find yourself successful on the other end. Click subscribe, hit that bell notification, and let's talk pipes. Peeps, Kenny Molotov here in the studio, and I wanted to tackle a really important question that a lot of you have, which is, what's a plumbing apprenticeship? And if you wait till the end, I'm gonna be deciphering the difference between a plumbing apprenticeship, a plumbing techniques course, and also a plumbing pre-apprenticeship because a lot of people get these three things mixed up. But let's tackle this right up front. What is a plumbing apprenticeship? A plumbing apprenticeship essentially is a program that the city, province, or state, or territory, depending on where you live, has in order to make sure that the trade of plumbing has a certain standard. What this means is, is that it is a government program to make sure that all the plumbers are certified in a specific way so that they're all at the same level. If you pass this certification, it essentially means that you are up to government standards in regards to working in that province, state, territory, etc. So this is a really big deal because it essentially means that the government is making sure that you have the necessary skills required to build in that area. Now, a couple of things you need to know, there are places on this planet that don't have life licensing. They don't have any sort of regulation as to what plumbing is supposed to be. Any person that's had any sort of experience, maybe even zero experience, can just go and open up a plumbing company. And that's not the case here in Ontario, Canada. Here in Ontario, Canada, the only way I'm legally allowed to open up a plumbing company is by having a plumbing license. So a couple of questions around this, a lot of people want to know, well, what's the advantage to having a plumbing license? There are a lot of general contractors that also do plumbing. One of the biggest advantages is that if I'm licensed as a plumber, I can open up a plumbing company. The other advantages are now I can actually charge top dollar because I'm as certified as I can be here for the province that I live in. So now that we've sort of gone through what a plumbing apprenticeship is, let me tell you what a plumbing apprenticeship encompasses here in Ontario. The first thing that you have to know is in order to become an apprentice, you have to sign up with a company that can hire an apprentice. What that means is we're also regulated according to the amount of apprentices a company can have. Each apprentice requires one job journey person or vice versa, one journey person can only register one apprentice. So in other words, if I started working with my father and he doesn't have an apprentice currently, I can register with my father as an apprentice. But if another person who's also green, who also wants to be an apprentice joins our company and my father has already registered me, he cannot register the second person as an apprentice until I finish my apprenticeship. So after my hours and after my in-class sessions are over and I get licensed, then he can officially register the, the second person. That doesn't mean they can't work and learn what plumbing is. That doesn't mean they can't log their hours. What that does mean though is they're not going to be able to start their process until I'm done mine. That's what that means. So it's really beneficial to join companies that have multiple journey persons because you can hire and register more apprentices at that point. So once you found a company that has an opening for an apprentice, you go in, you have to find the forms online, you got to sign up, you got to get your journey person to sign off on them and the company sign off on them. You hand them into the government. The government officially says, okay, Kenny Molotov is going to be an apprentice. You're starting your apprenticeship. Now, the things that you have to now log is you need 9,000 hours of work. What that means is approximately four to five years of work under your belt. Once you have 9,000 hours of work, provable hours that the company can prove to the government that you have 9,000 hours, that means you finished one phase of your apprenticeship. The second thing you're going to have to do is do three in class sessions. So what that means is that every year or couple of years, you're going to get a letter in the mail that basically says, Kenny Molotov has finished this many hours. It's time to go do your basic plumbing. So they're going to send you to a certified college that teaches the courses. You're going to go there. You're going to spend eight weeks there studying basic plumbing, then intermediate plumbing down the road, then advanced plumbing down the road. You have to pass each section. And once you do that and you have your 9,000 hours and you finish your three in-class sessions, you now go into the final phase, which is challenging your Red Seal exam. Red Seal is a term here in Canada, which basically means that if you are licensed in a Red Seal, that means you can work nationwide. That's what that basically means. But we also call it the Certificate of Qualification, C of Q. And the C of Q essentially is your licensing 
licensing exam. There are certain trades that are red seals, which means you could work nationwide if you get them. But to be a little bit thorough, you did your 9,000 hours, you did your three in-class sessions, you went and you challenged the exam, you wrote your C of Q, you got your red seal, and now you are a licensed red seal plumber. Something to know is here in Canada, we have multiple provinces and we have multiple territories. Now, when I go to college to learn plumbing, I actually learn the Ontario plumbing code, but we also have a national plumbing code. And the C of Q, the red seal, is on the national plumbing code because it is the national standard. But by getting qualified and passing the red seal, I'm essentially getting certified to be able to work nationwide. What the government is essentially saying is, okay, this individual, Kenny Molotov, knows plumbing well enough that if he goes to Northwest Territories, which is a, an entirely different area in Canada than I live in, I know enough to go get the code book in the Northwest Territories, look up all the charts, make sure that the pipe sizing is appropriate, make sure the fixture units are appropriate whenever I'm doing work in Northwest Territories. That's the point of the process. That's the point of the Red Seal. What you have to realize is there's a different code book every province. A lot of provinces adopted the national code, but here in Ontario, for example, there's an Ontario plumbing code book. So if somebody came from Quebec to work here, they'd have to get the Ontario plumbing code and learn the new numbers, learn the new sizes that they're going to have to install essentially. Now that we've gone through all of that, let's talk about a plumbing apprenticeship versus a plumbing pre-apprenticeship versus a plumbing techniques course. What a plumbing apprenticeship is, is a program designed by the government for you to get licensed in that province, territory, state, etc. so that you can work as a plumber or whatever the trade is in that area. And basically, you as an individual going through that program means that you are up to the current standards of that area. Plumbing pre-apprenticeship is as it sounds. It's a program that you sign up for, a lot of times you pay for, to go in and learn the very fundamentals of what that trade has to offer. Basically, a lot of times plumbing pre-apprenticeships are, they're advertised as ways of making you more hireable. A lot of people have a hard time getting hired by companies because you're totally green. You don't have any knowledge under your belt. You don't have any skills on the tools. And a lot of times that's what plumbing companies are looking for. But by going to a pre-apprenticeship, those teachers are gonna take you through what the tools are. They're gonna give you a couple of projects so you can learn how to cut pipe, size things correctly, etc. So that when you come out of a pre-apprenticeship, you can go to a company and say, look, I'm green, but here's the amount of things that I know. I already know about venting. I already know about uh, pipe sizing. I already know about types of tools, etc. So that's what the pre-apprenticeship is designed for. It's designed to make you a little bit more marketable. Now, what's a plumbing techniques course? A lot of times a plumbing pre-apprenticeship is called a plumbing techniques course. So essentially, they're the same thing. They're both designed to make you more marketable as somebody trying to get into that trade. A plumbing pre-apprenticeship is simply trying to get you a job. A plumbing apprenticeship is trying to get you licensed. A lot of times people ask, if I go through this plumbing techniques course, am I gonna be hired as a plumber? That's the hope, but you still have to do your entire apprenticeship in order to get licensed after that. So you gotta do your 9,000 hours, three in class sessions, and then challenge your exam. That's basically the gist of it all. Peeps, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. I tried to be as thorough as possible, but if there are any things that I missed, let me know and I'll try to answer them as quick as possible for you. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby.